Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide. We are on August 7th, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet and welcome to the Daily Do. Giving you your space weather update as well. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Looking here at the last 48 hours of imagery brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. We do have another X-class solar flare to talk about. Multiple M-class solar flares, plasma filaments, solar tornadoes. Lots to talk about here the last 48 hours. How about we look here at incoming imagery? This is the left side. Incoming plasma filament there from pretty big sunspot region, southern hemisphere. Multiple C-class solar flares firing away from the nine sunspot regions and M-class and X-class flaring here in the outgoing. Luckily, all of these CMEs were not in a complete Earth-facing direction. Having a look here in the northern hemisphere, closer look at the plasma tornado that was spinning around, right around, and as well, the X-class solar flares just recently on the outgoing regions of our sun. So yeah, solar tornado in the northern hemisphere and multiple strong solar flares creating coronal mass ejections. Lots of space weather to talk about. Having a look at multi-spectrum the last 48 hours, no major coronal holes to talk about except for in the southern hemisphere. Large plasma filament below that. Interesting dynamics all across our sun right now. Waiting for something to really pop. I think our sun is about to put on an even bigger show than we were expecting. Of course, it's already putting on a bigger show than NASA was predicting. Another look here at the most recent events that our sun has thwarted. Looking at 171 angstroms here. This is where we can see our heliosphere in action. Nine active sunspot regions, earth facing, some are turning away, and some more are turning in. Very active solar cycle 25, having a look at the sunspot regions in action, and there are nine of them. Much love, everybody, and thank you for pressing play, and thank you for all of the love towards this channel and information shared. Current space weather conditions right now sitting at R3. Strong radio blackout impacts are expected. Low frequency navigation signals degraded for about an hour there. Latest observed was R3 and for tomorrow. No geomagnetic storm expected for tomorrow, but solar X-ray flux looking at it now, as you can see, it's hyped up into an X-class solar flare yet again. So that is two in the past 48 hours. And we've seen two... Lo uh, M-class solar flares as well. So definitely an increase here in the solar X-ray flux. The beginning of a heightened solar cycle, a solar maximum. Solar proton flux as well was elevated during our geomagnetic storm yesterday. And again, thank you all for the birthday wishes. Having a look at real-time solar wind, we're going to sit... Sitting at 400 kilometers per second right now. We are down to about 360 just before the event. And then most notable here is the phi angle as of late. That is a full photon, proton event. And we are being affected right now. This is the highest frequency absorption map, the DRAP for short. This showing the cosmic influx. Not too bad, pretty moderate across North America, central regions today. But now recently with our X-class solar flare, watch this. Boom, right there. That is our impact zone right over the East Pacific. Highest frequency absorbed from this X-class solar flare. Quick look here at the region yet again. This is the last hour and a half. Boom. Now, luckily, 
This was not in an earth facing position, but during our heightened solar maximum, we can expect an X class solar flare in our position, possibly creating one of these in an earth direction. So this is the last uh, ISPA space prediction spiral showing the most latest event. And as well, another one here, not showing the X-class solar flare just yet, I don't think. Still waiting for a lot of data and images to come in here from NASA, NOAA. Having a look at LASCO-3, this is where we can see the cosmic energy leaving our sun, showing the coronal mass ejections, aka a CME. And the most recent X flare did produce a CME, but still waiting for all of its images to come in. Another closer view. And again, thank you all for following along with daily events worldwide, keeping humanity aware and prepared to space weather events, earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Having a look here at the Aurora forecast for tonight. And into tomorrow, not much of a geomagnetic event, nothing like what we saw over the last couple of days. Some pretty extraordinary Aurora pictures being shared all over Facebook. Speaking of which, find me on Facebook. My name is Mike Milks. And this is the last 24 hours for earthquakes here, starting with the largest, which was a 5.5 earthquake in Kyushu, Japan. Southern Japan with a 5.5 and a 4.9 multiple earthquakes north of that as well 5.1 there india southern india and as well a deep earthquake 4.3 556 kilometer depth pretty quiet across the hawaiian plate right now or across the pacific plate in the hawaiian region this is where a lot of the activity has been 4.5 there at Ak alaska and as well mccarthy with a 4.8 and also an alaska eruption to talk about the Shisholden volcano has erupted in the Aleutian Islands and it has produced a large SO2 cloud. We'll get to that in just a moment. Overlooking the rest of the world, quiet across the North American plate, nothing major to report. Way too quiet South American plate right now. Activity coming to Scotia Plate, the South Sandwich Islands there with a 5.3, 5.1, and a 4.9. Otherwise, very quiet right now. Still sitting under 200 earthquakes in the 24-hour period. Notable 4.6 earthquake there, northern Iceland. And then Afghanistan there with 4.2, 4.4, 4.1 today. And this is just a look here at the last few days. Definitely something building here up into the Indian plate, African plate. The Iceland volcano has all of a sudden stopped flowing the lava has stopped flowing so yeah where is all this pressure going well it's going to go to the earthquakes and then it's going to find another release point and it seems it already has through the Aleutian Islands with an eruption at the Shishaldan volcano in Alaska having a look here at the last seven days for shakers across the world noting here all of the elevated rings those are the depths of earthquakes Notable mid-Atlantic ridge up into Iceland. Maybe another volcano getting ready to awaken there. But around the world, we still have an active interrupting 49 volcanoes, including the Shishaldan. Having a look here at NASA Worldview, showing the latest satellite imagery, lots of smoke and cloud cover moving across Canada right now. Fires in Northwest Territories and Alaska and Yukon are still going. Got Tropical Storm Eugene here in the East Pacific, not going to affect main, uh, humanity. Looking at Category 3 Major Hurricane Dora. And then look at all the cloud cover across the Northern Pacific right now. And then we've got tropical systems across the West Pacific to talk about. Typhoon Tropical Storm Kanun, who was a Category 5 typhoon at one point 
throughout its life here, but it's been spinning for the past 12 days across the West Pacific, and it is getting ready to tear up parts of South Korea, Northern Korea, and Southern Japan Islands. Do have a couple more typhoons building in behind it in the long range forecast, so stay tuned and subscribe to Daily Events Worldwide. Overlooking Russia, we did have quite a bit of smoke coming from wildfires there. Big low pressure system just finished scooting right across, and you can see the smoke heading eastward across eastern Russia. Putting this into the motion for the next couple days. We've also got Invest Area 94 and Invest Area Tropical Depression 07W, who is alive. Eugene, Dora. be interesting here to see what the end of the Atlantic hurricane season brings to us, that's for sure. Let's get to world weather here, having a look at world weather forecast brought to you by windy.com. We do have some interesting systems developing here and still some warm moisture developing as we have three large lows affecting North America this week and another one later in the week coming out of Alberta. But it's definitely going to bring a lot of moisture to parts of eastern Canada, the Atlantic provinces, eastern seaboard of the United States. Long-range forecast, watch for an extreme weather event right up the seaboard and into Atlantic Canada. Lots of moisture for BC, system after system, pounding parts of northern BC right now. And then overlooking Europe and Africa, low-pressure center affecting parts of Norway right now that is going to scoot northward and then another system comes in from the North Atlantic and it looks like it's going to stall in between Iceland and the UK and then come back into the UK extreme weather event heading it through Ukraine in the long range forecast set for four days from now so the 13th or sorry 11th into the 12th Quick look here, long-range forecast overlooking the Pacific. As we do have Typhoon Kanun, who is still alive, heading towards southern Japan islands and then up into South Korea, North Korea. Having a look at the forecast track here, as it could possibly turn into a Category 2 or 3 by the time it makes landfall yet again. And then in the long-range Another typhoon here developing, heading for eastern Japan. 15th to the 16th for that one. But then lots of moisture heading across the Pacific. Hopefully it breaks down that high-pressure ridge, blocking a lot of moisture heading up into Pacific Northwest United States. Overlooking Southeast Asia as quite an intense monsoon season is occurring for 2023. Looking at these daily evaporation rains, they must have had tons of snow throughout their winter season because there is a lot of snowpack that is evaporating throughout the day. Much love, everybody. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world. Thank you.